Today, I would like to discuss with you the actual process of collective bargaining. So what is collective bargaining? Collective bargaining is something that uh, uh, occurs in the workplace when you have a unionized workforce that uh, negotiates agreements with management. So you are collectively bargaining your wages and working conditions and uh, uh, the policies that are going to govern employment at the workplace. So what are the what are the steps? What does collective bargaining actually look like? So I'm going to boil it down into a number of points. Uh, first, you have to establish a negotiating team. Workplaces are large. They have, you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of managers and you have a lot of workers. So somebody has to sit on the negotiating team. In unions, you usually elect positions, president, vice president, so on, secretary, treasurer of the labor union. And the, the president, along with representation from the union that uh, uh, represents the workforce, will be on the negotiating team. So, for example, if you have the uh, you have a, a teacher as the president of the teachers union, and then you have somebody from the the chapter of the National Education Association, uh, somebody who works for them, or the state level version of that, uh, on the bargaining team, and their job is to negotiate a contract. So you have uh, members from the workplace, and then you have the people um, from the union itself and then in the case of school districts you're negotiating with uh, members of the school board uh, but on the bargaining team would be then the superintendent and administrate at the, the top level administration at um, the, uh, the school it, within the school system so you have to establish a negotiating team who's going to do the negotiating and once you establish that negotiating team you need to then analyze your experience under the current agreement, if there is one. So if there was a previous collective bargaining agreement, you would want to analyze what, what was the experience under that agreement. What worked, what didn't work. What would you want to do uh, the next time around differently? So uh, administration or management and the uh, workers are going to do they're both going to do this. And sometimes there are going to be points of agreement where something gets into the contract that uh, the intention was good, but it doesn't work in practice for management or the workers. Uh, it sets up a process, a very poor process. And maybe there's points of agreement that this needs to be changed. Uh, there may be something that works for administration, but doesn't work for the teachers. And so the, the administration will fight to keep it in. The teachers will not, or whatever, you know, police officers, firefighters, whoever's uh, in the workforce that is doing the negotiating, whatever workplace we're talking about. Uh, so you're going you're gonna to have to step back and look at what are the conditions uh, under the previous agreement, the one that's expiring. In, in this course, you have a previous agreement to work from, so you know what the conditions were. Uh, uh, from the previous agreement and, and you have something to start with. Uh, what do we want to change from that agreement? What do we want to stay the same? Uh, uh, if you don't have an agreement, you have to start from scratch, which takes a very long time, which is why in our classroom simulation, I'm not having you start from scratch, negotiate a brand new contract from scratch. So in this analysis, you'd want to analyze the, wa the wages, the benefits, data, uh, you'd want to compare the um, information from your wages and benefits to other jurisdictions and occupational groups. You'd want to uh, compare and contrast. Are, are the teachers in your district being paid the same or close to the same as the teachers in another district? Are the firefighters in, uh, in, in our town doing as well as the firefighters in um, the neighboring town? So you want to compare where where do we stand? Uh, 
management is going to do the same. Are we overpaying our workforce? Uh, uh, what kind of benefits are other communities given, giving that we're not? You're also going to want to analyze recent legal developments. Uh, were there court cases? Were there laws passed that make that that make uh, things that were in the agreement previously not legal? Um, if there if there's something that's been if there's a law that's been passed that has outlawed something in your collective bargaining agreement, you you need to remove that from the agreement. Um, for the purposes of this course, that is uh, getting deeper into the weeds than you will have to in your simulation, where you you can um, assume that the things that are in there are legal and we can um, negotiate from the previous contract. But in, in practice, you'd want to analyze the, the different legal developments that have happened. Uh, for example, the Supreme Court recently ruled in Janus v. asked me that uh, uh, payroll deductions, automatically deducting uh, union fees from uh, paychecks is unconstitutional. So now having that in a collective bargaining agreement where that happens, where the administration agrees that we're going to take out a certain amount of the paycheck to pay for the union's collective bargaining, um, that has to be removed because it's illegal now. That's a, a, a very big example, of course. So then after you've analyzed what the, con the current conditions are, how did the last agreement work, you need to prioritize your demands. You need to figure out, okay, what are our priorities going into negotiations? What, what do we need to change? What do we care about most and why? You need justifications. In our simulation, this is an individual assignment where uh, you will um, each come up individually uh, as members of the bargaining unit uh, you're going to rank the different items, the different sections of the contract, salary and compensation, employment conditions, insurance, uh, uh, and, and, and the other sections. You're going to rank them one to five and give, give a justification for, e for where you're putting each one. Collectively then, once we understand where all the individuals sit, we're going to have the priorities of the bargaining unit. We're going to know what matters to administration and what matters to workers. Once you've prioritized your demands, then um, you have to uh, conference, you have to discuss, uh, in, in our class we'll do it on a discussion board, you have to discuss these priorities and how much you want to ask for. So if your number one priority is salary, uh, what are you going to ask for? A 3% raise for the next three years? A 5% raise for the next three years? A 1% raise for the next three years? Uh, if if uh, your administration and your number one um, issue is getting the workers to pay more for health insurance, what are you going to ask for? 15% uh, of, out of, uh, uh, of your... Uh, uh, Contribution, twenty percent contribution. What is important, and what are you going to ask for? Once you figured out your priorities, then you have to write an initial proposal. Uh, the initial proposal is is ninety nine percent of the time not what you end up with. It's it's uh, where you start negotiations. We want this. What are you going to give us? The other side says we want that. What are you going to give us? So both sides create what they consider the ideal proposal, and um, this is where they this is their starting point in, in bargaining. From here, they may you make uh, formal presentations. Uh, uh, in our class, we won't make a formal presentation of the of the uh, uh, the initial proposals, but you will present the proposal to the other side. So each bargaining unit, this is a group part of the assignment. You will. Uh, construct an initial proposal, contract proposal, uh, submit that to me as the instructor, and then once I have both initial proposals, what what the uh, superintendent and their unit want, and what the president of the teachers union and their and their unit wants, then I will take both proposals and deliver them to each of you, so you can both see here's what the other side wants. Um, so you make a, a, a you make a formal presentation of your written proposal and your demands. Then, 
the negotiation can start. You, you set the agenda for what will be discussed first. Uh, do you want to discuss, discuss points where both are in agreement? Those are easy things to change. Hey, we both agree we need smaller class sizes, or we both agree uh, on something. Uh, uh, you discuss, maybe you leave the hard things for the back end of the discussions. You decide what do you want to discuss first. Then you conduct negotiations. Uh, okay, so we want pay raises, you want us to pay more in uh, our health insurance, so you know, where are we going to find some kind of common ground? Where are we going to find agreement? Uh, negotiations go back and forth. Uh, uh, you make a demand, they make a demand, you make a concession, they make a concession. Nobody gets everything they want, usually everybody gets something they want. Um, then you have to draft the agreement and have it and and have a, a a vote on it. Both sides need to approve it. In this class, we're going to we're going to have the negotiations. We're going to draft the agreement um, together. Uh, and then, since everybody's a member of the bargaining unit, uh, uh, the negotiation team, uh, we don't need to take it back to a larger group like three hundred teachers to have it voted on. Um, the class is small enough that you're all on the negotiating team, so we're not going to need a formal vote once we come to an agreement. But you would draft the final agreement. Both sides would take the agreement to each of their members, and if it gets a yes vote from both sides, you have a new collective bargaining agreement. And uh, that is a, a crash course in how this process works. Uh, so what you'll be doing is, right now you're discussing uh, what is important to you, you're coming up with priorities, then we'll come up with an initial proposal, we'll share those initial proposals once they're turned in, we'll conduct negotiations, uh, led mostly by a, a lot by um, the leadership on each side, and then finally we will, we will come up with a final negotiated agreement that the leadership will sign and, uh, and we'll have collectively bargained a new contract. Uh, so that's the process. Uh, it does vary by state um, how, uh, in some ways. And uh, in public employment, sometimes the state legislature actually has to improve, approve a contract. But, uh, but overall, that's the nuts and bolts of collective bargaining.